So we've talked about the peculiar nature of React State, but this video, we're going to shine a light on not only React State, but how it applies to arrays and objects and why updating arrays and objects is so difficult and how to do it. So the first thing is that if you want to create an array or an object in React, it's actually incredibly simple. There's no secret to it. You just initialize your array in here, or you can initialize an object. When you first create something, when you first actually introduce it into memory, into the computer, it's very easy. You just put it inside of the parentheses inside of your use state. But after it's been declared, after it's been set, after React renders, it becomes a totally different story. And that's because updating, simply put, is very hard. But I'm going to explain to you the mechanics of why React makes it this way, and it will make it a lot easier to understand. So let's just forget about this array right here. If we want to declare an array we just declare an array in memory and we set it as such. But what a lot of people don't realize is that they are updating at the exact same place in memory. So if I wanted to add my first and last name and I were to add my last name to this array, this is the exact same place in memory. But what React wants is you to create a totally different new piece of data at a different place in memory, aka make your data immutable versus mutable and the reason that react wants you to create a totally piece of data and not just modify the existing array or the existing piece of data that you have is because it's going to use a different place in memory to trigger the re-render and by creating a new array you're pointing to a different place in memory and by adding a totally different piece of new data React is going to trigger the re-render. And that's the exact reason React does not want you to mutate the same exact array. So if we want to actually modify our array, what we're going to use is what's called a spread operator. Basically what you're going to do is add the array and proceed it by these three dots and then add the new values that you want to the array. And then you will save it with the set state hook that you have provided. That's really complicated, but the easiest way to actually understand this is to see it in action and actually code something in VS Code. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's update our array in state. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump straight into creating an array for our values. So I'm gonna say these are the portfolio values. So portfolio values, and we'll say set portfolio values and these are basically going to hold all of our stock picks portfolio is just a fancy word for your favorite stocks and this is going to be a string array so go here we'll go ahead and we will do a create technically we're creating an array and we'll go down here and go ahead and start adding to our array so Technically, we've already created. Now what we're going to be doing is updating. You may be tempted to do this. A lot of times people are tempted to go here and say add or push or some type of method that's going to do it, that's going to mutate the actual array. But remember, you do not want to do that. What we want to do is we want to spread. So we'll go, so say const, we'll say updated portfolio. And we're going to do add our previous or our values that we already have. And then we are going to add the target. So we'll say e.target zero. Since we need to reach in and grab that first element out of the actual form. And we're going to say value. And synthetic event isn't going to have support for any of these properties right here. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to turn off the actual... Uh, TypeScript. Sometimes you just have to turn off TypeScript. It's just the name of the game. So now that we've got our updated array, now what we are going to do is we're going to actually set our portfolio values and we're going to say uh, set portfolio and we are going to add our updated values. And remember that this is going to create a totally new array for us and it's going to store all, all of those port portfolio values up at the top for us. 
So now what we need to do is we need to actually create a portfolio list or I'm going to call it a list portfolio. I'm going to add it within our portfolio folder. I'm going to say list portfolio. And then we're going to have to create another list component for this. So say uh, portfolio list, list portfolio, whatever you want to call it. I'll say list portfolio.tsx. Then I'm also going to go into here. I'm going to say list portfolio like this. I'm going to go CSS. I'm going to click right here. Go TSRAFC bring everything in that I need. Go ahead, bring that over like that. And let's go ahead and let's add this to the top part of our app file and make sure that's working. So I'm gonna go search and then I'm going to say uh, list portfolio. Go ahead, add it like that. And let's make sure that it is on the screen before we even continue. Okay, so we've got our list portfolio right here. And now what we need to do is we need to actually create the actual list that is going to render everything that's within our actual portfolio values here. And each time that this triggers, it's going to trigger and all that data is going to cascade down. So what we need to do is we just need to pass the portfolio values. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass that down. It's going to be the same thing that we call the state. While I'm at it, I'm also going to create a card port portfolio. So I'm going to go card portfolio. I'm going to say card portfolio.tsx. Actually, re going to rename that to card portfolio, not card. So card portfolio. Then I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to say card portfolio.css. So I'm going to say card portfolio. Dot CSS. Then I'm going to call this TSRFACE. Go ahead, do my interface right here, and we're good to go on that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my list and I need to start doing the iteration. But before I do that, I need to bring in the portfolio value so that it can actually be uh, brought down. So we're going to go here. It's going to be a string array, of course. Then what I'm going to do is probably just give this a nice little title right now. So I'm going to have an H3. I'm going to call this my portfolio until we can get some good CSS going on. Then I'm going to have a uh, unordered list. I'm going to have the portfolio values. So say portfolio I need to go ahead and pass this down through the props. So portfolio values. Okay, then I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Going to uh, do a conditional render. So if the portfolio values are there, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to iterate through it. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna say portfolio values dot map. And I'm going to say, portfolio value in the singular form, then go back down here. I'm going to do a return and I'm going to return the card portfolio. So I'm going to say card portfolio, just like that. Okay. Now what I need to do is just very quickly do my card portfolio. This is going to be very easy and then we can go ahead and test it. So I'll say port portfolio value, and it's going to be a string instead of an array. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm gonna say portfolio value, then going to, uh, let's see here. We'll have a fragment, we'll pass down an H4, and we'll go ahead, pass in the portfolio value, just like this, and then we will have a button, which we will come back in the next video. It'll be an X that we can be able to, so that we can delete the button. And here we need to pass down the portfolio value. So I'm gonna say portfolio value, go here. So portfolio value, just like that. So we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna go into here, gonna go Microsoft, Go ahead and add it. Yes, we have the ability to add to our portfolio, but we've got one thing that we we also have to figure out. We're, we've got duplicates here. So let's go ahead, let's add a simple piece of logic so that we're not duplicating all of these values. 
And the way that I'm going to do that, and you, technically you don't have to do this. I would highly recommend that you do this, but you don't have to. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to check if it exists. So check if it exists, say portfolio values dot find. So we'll go here. We'll say value is equal to value triple equals E dot target dot value. And we got to give this the zero right here. So go ahead, make sure that works. And if it exists, we are going to return. So let's go back and try one more time. So I'm going to go here, go back. Let's try a little bit of Apple action. Boom. Oh, sweet. Would you look at that? Can't add too many apples, but we can add APPD. Let's check maybe a little bit of VTI. We can add some VTI. Actually, this, this is actually starting to look really cool. This is, look, this is looking like a really cool app. We can add some Tesla and we can now add to our portfolio. We'll do the delete in the next video. We'll start doing the CSS. Hope that you guys like this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.